Greetings. Welcome back to the video series on Intro to Transportation Engineering, Part 1B on Transportation System. Earlier we saw why a healthy transportation sector means healthy economy. We also noted the transportation sector creates jobs, in fact, tens of millions of jobs. In this course, we cannot obviously talk about all aspects of transportation. Rather, we are going to focus on highway transportation only. Specifically, engineering aspects related to highway transportation. But before we get to highway transportation, let's do a roundup of transportation system itself. That will perhaps justify the title of this course. If you noticed, just now I used two terms, transportation sector and transportation system. Well, what's the difference? When we say transportation sector, it's usually in the economic context revenue, trade, and such. By calling it transportation system, we are referring to operational engineering, safety, and planning aspects of transportation. Let's just say the economists prefer transportation sector, and we engineers prefer to call it transportation system. Once again, wherever you see this stamp, that material is deemed important for course learning objectives. It also means that if you are taking this course for credit, you may be tested on that material. The slightly altered classic definition or purpose, if you will, of the transportation system is safe and efficient movement of people and goods in an environmentally friendly way. Keep in mind, these days, everything about transportation system revolves around these keywords, safety, efficiency, movement, that is mobility, and the environment. Any course on transportation system, college level or otherwise, involves the study of people, that is the users of the system, rolling stock, you can call it travel modes like plane, rail, automobile, truck, ship, etc. Infrastructure and services, which includes roads, tracks, bridges, terminals, scheduled services, intermodal connections. Institutional policies and procedures, which include information and control. Let's look at the first component, which is the role of the people in transportation system. The demand for transportation is driven by the needs of the people and affected their behavior, the choices they make. Currently, the transportation system usage and performance is controlled by human factors. All these are relevant factors for highway engineering. The second system component is Primary modes of transportation are, you can also call the rolling stock. So what are the primary mo modes of transportation? Air, water, pipeline, and surface transportation, which includes rail and road. Let's dig a little deeper into each of the transportation modes. First up, air transportation. The picture you see here is the first commercial flight that took place in 1914, first commercial jet took place in 1958, which is 44 years after the first commercial flight. And the next three bullet points or major bullet points are about trade, passenger travel, and then safety. And when we talk about modes, these are the three main things we are trying to talk about. The numbers are a bit dated. There is uh, no point in remembering them, but it is important if you can remember the trends this, these trends, even though the, the numbers are dated, the trends still hold up. For instance, um, freight in terms, of, uh, in terms of dollars per year, they're up. In 2014, it's $1 trillion per year, and it's up from 395 in 93, went up to $770 billion in 2002. Likewise, domestic employment, they went up in uh, fi uh, they, they went up uh, 508,000 in 1994 to 701,000 in 2004. Safety is also in the right track, 964 deaths in 95 to 602 deaths in 2005. So I, I'm going to present similar numbers for other modes, but I'm not going to list them like I did for tra air transportation. All you need to know is see the trend which is up or down and uh, even if the numbers are dated they, they, they they're still good today water transport it is considered the cheapest means of transportation of uh, especially for freight 
and the one thing one trend number i can give you here to remember is safety numbers in terms of fatalities they, they are down which is a which is good and there are about 26000 miles of navigable waterways in united states the major problem with respect to water transportation is aging fleet when we talk about transportation we barely think about pipelines as a means of transportation right because it doesn't transport people as a matter of fact pipeline is one of the key elements of uh, transportation especially the, in in terms of trade we have nearly f- uh, 3500 million tons of commercial freight moved in 2002 and uh, the trend of with respect to fatalities first of all what are the fatalities with respect to pipeline there's are the, these are the fatalities that happen on the surface it's not that some people are being transported through pipelines and one of the important things about uh, pipelines is hazardous liquid pipelines there are about 100 nearly 162000 miles of uh, i mean this is where you pump gasoline crude oil etc and then the gas connection to your home those type of uh, connections there those pipelines are nearly 1.5 million uh, miles of uh, gas pipelines in us so when we said surface transportation we are actually talking about rail transportation and highway transportation within rail transportation you have railroads and rail transit and rail uh, railroads are passenger railroads like amtrak freight railroads like csx and norfolk rail transit is going to be virginia uh, something like regional if you are familiar with washington dc area you have Virginia Railway Express commuter train and Mark commuter train and there are intercity trains in the again in the Washington DC area you have orange line red line these are heavy rails and when it comes to highway transportation we have personal passenger and freight components that are uh, that travel on highway we talk more about highway transportation later but first let's talk a little bit about rail transportation There is one important definition you should remember that's about classification of freight railroads. They are classified as class 1, class 2 or class 3 based on revenue. Class 1 being the highest re- revenue generating railroad, for instance, CSX would fall under class 1 railroad. There are 95,000 class 1 railroad ra- railroad tracks in 2005 and they're down from uh 108 thousand in uh, 1995 i do not know the exact reason for this one i i suspect it has something to do with unused tracks being removed and of course the, there is a lot of freight that is shipped using rail transport uh, uh, rail transport and this, as far as safety here is a important question i wanted to ask you if an accident happens at a railroad crossing would you classify that as a highway end or a ra- railroad accident i'm not exactly sure but i think it is it it gets counted towards both but general trend on um, accidents with respect to rail transportation safety it's it's in the right direction which is uh, down we have an entire section on highway transportation but this list kind of gives you an idea about what highway transportation is all about Let's see how different modes compare with each other in terms of mobility, freight and safety. How is the growth in mode utilization looking? This chart is a bit dated again but gives you a general idea. You can see the trends related to transit are down that includes Amtrak, General Transit and bus. Maybe we can say they are all over the place, but long-term trends of passenger miles are up for air carrier passenger car and light truck this is the same chart which is also dated no surprise but this time for vehicle miles of travel which is also known as vmt here all trends are up including transit which was all over the place if you remember from previous chart recall that we learned the purpose of transportation is to safely and efficiently transport people and goods in an environmentally friendly manner correct speaking of goods let's see how modes compare in terms of freight shipments this is a beautiful beautiful chart it gives you 
the relative ranking of various modes with respect to freight on the left in dollar terms and on the right in, in tonnage. In dollar terms, water transportation has the highest share of the trade both in exports and imports. At number two is air transport followed by truck at number three. Now take a look at the chart on the right. In terms of tonnage, water transportation, water transportation still has the highest share of trade both in exports and imports. The percent share of water transport is much larger than its percent share in terms of dollars. This time, shipping by truck takes the second place followed by the rail at number three. Air transportation is nowhere to be seen on the chart on your right. Remember, the purpose of transportation system is safe and efficient movement of people and goods, okay? We saw the trends about transporting people and goods. They're good, but what about the trends on safety? This table gives you trends in fatal accidents by various modes, fatal being people died. The general trend among all modes is down, good, but which mode is the safest? Can you tell? No, you can't tell from this chart because you don't see the exposure to each mode. Normalizing for exposure, by exposure I mean per 100 million passenger miles would be an exposure measure. Normalizing for such exposure, air transportation is the safest, highway transportation is the worst. Well, you just have to take my word for it, that is true. Even though the trend is in the right direction, there are nearly 33 1,000 people died on highway in uh, 2010. At this rate, in 20 years, more people would have died on roads than those who died in America's civil war. This is not acceptable. Hopefully, when you become practicing engineer, you will be able to make positive difference with regards to safety. Now to the third system component, infrastructure and services such as guideways and terminals. Transportation infrastructure can be a guideway, a terminal, or in the form of a service. Roads and highways are nothing but guideways. Engineering for them is what we call highway engineering, which is the bulk of this course. Talking about terminals, transit services, or commercial aviation is not within the scope of this course. Now to the fourth and last system component, policies and procedures, which includes information and control. This list should give you an idea about what we mean by policies and procedures. Like other three components, this one is huge. We won't talk much about institutional structure, but we will talk about what highway engineering means to rules of the road, information, and control. That brings us to our focus, which is highway engineering, which is a small part of highway transportation. So what is highway engineering? It is engineering the road infrastructure for safe and efficient movement of people and goods in an environmentally friendly way on highways. And that's what this course is about. Just as you would expect, this course covers people, rolling stock, infrastructure, policies and procedures for highway transportation. Before I conclude this part, I want to leave you with some statistics to remember. You have to memorize all these line by line. Just kidding. This is only to give you an idea about the magnitude of highway transportation, the big picture, if you will. These numbers should give you an idea about the size of the market for your engineering services after you graduate. On this chart, the only two things you will need to pay close attention to and are off are the ones that are highlighted in boxes like this one on National Highway System and this one on Highway Trust Fund. You will see more, uh, more about these two in the next part. So what did we learn in part 1c? We learned the definition of the transportation system, we identified four major components of transportation system and we talked in detail about only one of those four components which is transportation modes with respect to what these modes are, wh where they stand in their own right, and how they compare with each other on mobility of people and goods and safety. Here are some sample quiz questions from this part. 
if you watch the video completely, you shouldn't have any problem in answering these questions.